That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. I'm Shane Raymer. You're listening to That Sober Guy podcast, and we help people stay sober. Good to be here today. Glad you're here as well. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. So stoked that you found the podcast. You're either trying to stay sober, you already are sober, uh, you want to get sober, you just want to live a better, healthy lifestyle and have some fun at the same time. You're in the right place, I promise you that. If you like humans' music, you like this opening song, this is the homeboys from Canada, my buddy Robbie. I haven't talked to Robbie in a minute, man. I have to reach out to him, but they have some great music. I appreciate them, and uh, you can check them out on Spotify, iTunes, a lot of great jams there. All our Canada listeners as well. I know we got a lot of listeners, people who reach out from Canada. So shout out to you guys. Check out Humans. They're in your area up there. Humansmusic.com, I believe. You can give us a follow on Instagram. Back on there at That Sober Guy Podcast. Pretty happy to be back on there. Focusing on recovery. Leaving it at that. Took a little break for a minute, a hiatus, trying to build up the following again. So please give us a follow on there. And then uh, check us out at the Locals, That Sober Guy Podcast Locals community. It's kind of like Instagram meets Patreon. And uh, you can help support us and you can also be part of a growing sober community to help stay accountable and, of course, have some fun at the same time. I'd love to have you join right now. Download the Locals app. Go to that thatsoberguypodcast.locals.com. Both links are in the show notes. And uh, you can find those there. Uh, if you're struggling, you need a meeting, you need something, uh, I got a couple things for you. Number one, the Fourth Dimensioners um, Zoom meeting is every night at 6 p.m. Pacific. And uh, actually, talked talk to Buddy today. And uh, one of the things he told me that I didn't know about the Fourth Dimensioners is if you're looking for a chip, maybe you got your 30 days or your, your uh, 60 days, your 90 day, your one year. Obviously, uh, there's not, you know, everywhere isn't, uh, having in-person meetings. Some places are, some places aren't. Some people want in-person, some people don't. So if you're one of the people that doesn't or you or you don't have that option, but you still want to get a chip, if you show up to the Fourth Dimensioners meeting, they will mail you a chip. It's freaking pretty awesome. I found that out today. Just wanted to pass on the message. So, uh, you know, you can help celebrate those wins, man. They're huge. And I encourage you guys to do so. Uh, so once again, Fourth Dimensioners, uh, online Zoom meeting every night, 6 p.m. Pacific. There's a speaker on Saturdays, I believe. The link to that is in the show notes, so you can check it out there. It's also on the website. Uh, and then another thing we have is how to navigate the first 90 days of sobriety digital podcast course. Now, I put this together with some doctors, with some of my friends, with some fellow podcasters that you might know, uh, a couple of them. Uh, and we just talked about what your first 90 days was like or what their first 90 days was like, what mine was like. I shared my experience on there. Some of the doctors on there shared what they see from a professional perspective uh, on what that looks like. What are some of the challenges? How can we help you get through those first 90 days uh, and, and kind of know what to expect in, uh, in that time? It's a crucial time. Uh, so if you want to check that out, there's additional podcast resources in there. Um, all kinds of good stuff. You can go to that sober Check it out there. Uh, and then, of course, we got hoodies, hats, all kinds of merch. Any way you can support us. Much appreciated. Love you guys, and uh, let's jump into the show today. Uh, so wherever you go, there you are, is what I titled the episode today. Here's why I did that a bit. This is the first episode I'm recording down in Huntington Beach, California, where we are at the moment. Um, it's been crazy, man, the last couple of months. I don't know how the hell we ended up here, but it is a great place. Um, we've been doing some bodyboarding in the ocean and on the beach and some great food, having a great time as a family, trying to, uh, get acclimated a bit. And, uh, it is, uh, it's change, you know, it's, it's changed no matter what, and it's changed in a good way. But over the last couple of months, um, it's been a lot of change and it all kind of hit, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks, um, it's, you know, I, I actually did the podcast on change. What was that? Was that two episodes ago? Yeah. Episode 360, where I talked a little bit about that process and what it is. And one of the things I'm going to dive into a little bit here in just a few is, um, 
something that Buddy and I talked about this morning, and and he had mentioned that this is a great opportunity to stay spiritually fit through change. So how do you sit in the moment? How do you be in the moment? How do you be aware? How do you be present is the big one for me that I've really been trying to focus on uh, through big change. Uh, whether it's good change or bad change. I know we're all going through different changes. You know, maybe your change is uh, something that's not pleasant. Maybe it's something that's rough. It's still change. Maybe, or, you know, maybe your change is great. Maybe you got a new job or you got promoted or, um, you know, you hit a year sober or 30 days sober, whatever it is, we're constantly changing. And if we're not able to adjust to those changes and stay spiritually uh, fit in the moment and be aware, be present, which I'm not saying that I'm perfect at it. And I wouldn't expect that anybody is perfect at it. That's just, that's life. You know, that's, that's going to be pretty tough to accomplish perfection. But that's why we talk about progress, not perfection. We want to be moving forward, um, you know. And so I was going to talk about this uh, this yoga on on the beach uh, that we did here the other day, not because of that, which w- it was awesome, by the way. But one of the things that she said was to keep moving forward. I'm going to take a quick little note of this and come back to it here, so I don't forget. Um, before we uh, jump into, I wanted to talk a little bit about you know some of the things that I'm doing to stay spiritually fit. Uh, in through this change is what I was getting at. I know I'm a bit all over the place today. It's been a long day and I'm uh, kind of at the tail end of it. Um, but also wherever you go, there you are. I really realized that getting down here. I'm in a beautiful place, beautiful people, lots of things to do. It's amazing. I love it that we're, we're adjusting. It's change regardless though. And it still can be tough, even though it's awesome. At the same time, What I've really realized is it doesn't matter where you go because there you are. That's that old cliche saying, I'm still here. I still got to deal with my shit. Happiness comes from within. And I'm really realizing that, um, you know, after stepping out and and making this, uh, this, this big change that we've decided to make as a family. And so, um, I'm going to dive into that in just a minute. I want to come back to it though, because I want to congratulate somebody who has kept in touch over the last couple of years and is doing awesome. Uh, her name's Joe. She's from Australia. Um, she's celebrating two and a half years today, which is pretty awesome. I think it's in the last couple of days this week. And, uh, she hit me up on Instagram and just shared that. And she's been really good about that, about celebrating her wins. You know, I can remember her hitting, uh, hitting me up on a year and I can't believe it's already two and a half years at this point. Um, so, you know, huge shout out, huge congrats to her. Um, you know, if Joe can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And you just got to hang in there and, and put in the work and keep showing up. Uh, one of the things that I asked Joe, um, was, you know, what, what was it that has helped her get to two and a half years? Um, and cause I was curious, I, I, I wanted to hear some of the things that she's been doing and then I wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, and, and, you know, so you can get an idea. And, uh, she said, um, what's helped is having a sponsor and being taken through the steps. So she's actively working the steps. Um, that's huge. Um, I've, I've done a couple of step works. My, even Jess has done uh, step work in celebrate recovery as a spouse of somebody in recovery. So, you know, it goes on both ends of that. If you're the spouse or you have your spouse is somebody who is uh, like Jess, who doesn't have the addiction issues, um, they still need some, some help and some understanding and some um, you know, some experience from hearing some experience from some other people in order to help, uh, live together and to help operate in a relationship. It's not an easy thing. So the step work, whether it's celebrate recovery, or if you are in recovery and it is one of the 12 step programs, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, it's huge and it does help. And I can promise you that it's not an easy thing either. It takes work. You got to show up and you got to put the work in. Um, and so, so Joe's doing that. She's got a sponsor, which is huge, a mentor, whatever label you want to put on it, a friend, somebody that you can talk to that understands, preferably somebody that's in recovery or that has been through it before. Um, she also said understanding the book and how it's supposed to be used. Uh, so she's talking about 12 step books and you, there's different programs. I'm just trying to keep it general for you guys too, because I know the program I work um, and I actually, there's a couple of them that I work and have worked. Uh, I like to kind of 
um, blend some of the stuff together what works best for me. And I, I'm a firm believer that just because something works for me or somebody else doesn't mean it's going to work for you and vice versa. I think we should be open um, you know, to, to whatever it is that helps keep us sober. It's really irrelevant. The point is, is that we stay sober. We don't need to you know, argue and talk about mine's better and you need to do it this way and that way. We just need to stay sober. And so um, there's different books, but she's been into the books. She also said book studies, um, going to Zoom meetings. So a lot of Zoom meetings are happening right now. I was just on one on my Monday night meeting. Shout out to Mark and the rest of the Monday night boys. Uh, appreciate you guys. That was a great way for me to, to kind of get jump or get reconnected after this big move. Um, and uh, it's it's been that support is huge, you know, so she's going to zoom meetings. Uh, you also have the fourth dimensioners that I mentioned. So if you need one of those meetings, there's one in the show notes for you. It's great. Like a hundred people in there. Um, I think it caps at a hundred people actually. So you got to get in a little bit early cause it usually does fill up and there's tons of other ones too. Tons of other meetings, not just that one. You can find them all over the place. Um, she said, uh, zoom meetings, podcasts, uh, that sober guy in particular. So thank you for that. I appreciate you listening, Joe. You've been listening for a long time. I'm glad that we can help serve. Uh, there's also other podcasts, of course, um, just type in sobriety or recovery and you're going to get a whole list of them. Uh, listening to people in the fellowship with their hope and inspiration. Um, I mean, that's huge too. So you know, what, what is that? Well, that's hearing people's experience. That's hearing people sharing. That's hearing people's struggles and their challenges and how they've got through things and understanding that you're not alone in them and that, um, you know, you're not the only one going through it. Uh, addiction, alcoholism, mental health that isolates the brain. Uh, and the brain is a powerful thing. Uh, it's got a mind of its own. I like to uh, think sometimes. It's funny. The brain has a mind of its own. I like to think the brain likes to think, I don't know, I'm psyching myself out there, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's a powerful, powerful thing. And when you can listen to other people share and realize that you're not alone and that you're not fucking weird or tripping, uh, well, we're all tripping sometimes, but you know what I'm saying? Like you're you're not alone in this. It's not going to isolate you anymore when you start showing up to meetings and listening to podcasts and reading books and go through the steps and get a mentor and uh, or a sponsor. Those are the types of things putting in the work that are going to, uh, to going to help. And then, uh, she also said watching, uh, watching myself grow as well. And I feel so much stronger. So she's, it sounds like Joe is reflecting as well on her wins. And I know that's true because she always reaches out and says, Hey, just like this, two and a half years, you know, she's marking that progress along the way. And I I know it hasn't been perfect. I know that she's had some ups and downs as have I, as have you and anybody who's been in recovery. That's part of life, you know, but dealing with those ups and downs and not going back out and drinking is using that alcohol tool to deal with it is what's most important. And that's why we have some of these things, these resources and ways that we can deal with life on life's terms instead of Shane Raymer's terms or your terms or whatever it is, because I'm going to fuck it up if I do that, because that's just what happens. Um, so I also wanted to share some of the things that that I'm doing right now. In addition to Joe. So one more time, Joe, big congrats, two and a half years, super proud of you. Um, thank you for checking in and thank you for letting me share that. I I made sure I asked Joe as well. Hey, do you mind if I share this on the podcast? Of course she said, hell yeah, go for it. So uh, I hope that helps somebody else out there and relates uh, to her. And you know what? Give, uh, give Joe, let's see. Well, I was going to say a follow, but I don't, I better check with that first. I'll just, uh, I'll pass on that. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to pass. <laughs> I was going to say, give Joe a follow on Instagram, but you know, you never know. I don't want to be giving people stuff out on here. So we'll just we'll hang tight on that. If you do want to contact her, you can shoot me a message or whatever, and I can hook you guys up. How about that? That's a, that's a great way. So go to at that sober guy podcast on Instagram. Hey, I want to link up with Joe and then I'll try to try to connect you. If you got questions or you want to reach out, um, what are some of the things that I'm doing? Okay, so and since this move, so I mentioned the the Monday night men's meeting, which was great. Uh, it's a small meeting. Um, I think there's, I don't know, maybe 10, 10, 12 guys in there, usually uh, some new guys, a lot of the same guys. Uh, and it's great because I can't hide in the back in the big meetings, which I can tend to do sometimes. I don't know if I'm the only one who does that, but if you get in a meeting that's got like a lot of people, it's really easy to just hang tight. 
you know, and just kind of sit in the back and, you know, you listen and whatever, but you're not as, or at least I'll speak for myself. I'm not as uh, active in it per se, but when it's my buddy Mark's meeting and, uh, you know, he's hosting it and he's invited me to it and there's only 10 or 12 guys, everybody shares like you, you have to be active in that. And I really, really like that because it forces me to step out a little bit and make sure that I'm engaging and that I'm communicating and talking and listening uh, and supporting and sharing and all that good stuff. So um, the the Monday men's meeting, huge, jumped into that this week. That was great. Short meditation sessions have been great. Um, if you want to, some sober meditations is an app that Buddy created. It's a great app. It's got a ton of stuff on there. Um, I do use that one. I also use uh, one of my favorites is Noah Levine. I've mentioned this a lot on the podcast, I know, but it's Meditation Studio. And uh, there's one, uh, there's one in particular that I, it's actually the only, it's only really the only uh, guided meditation that I use on here. I should probably branch out and use a little bit more, but I just love this one so much. It's called ease with everything by Noah Levine. It's 11 minutes long. And so I'll do that, you know, on my walks in the morning, um, I'll, I'll go sit down it on a bench by the beach or by the park or whatever, and, and just listen. Um, and, uh, that has been a great way to kind of like just slow down a little bit, slow the mind down. Um, even walking, you know, is like a form of meditation. And then I was mentioning this earlier today too, is that sometimes I just want it to be quiet too. Like no music, no podcasts, um, no guided meditations, no nothing. I just want to hear the sounds. I want to sit in myself for a moment and just relax for a minute, no headphones, no noise. And I've, I've been noticing lately that that is a great way to help connect um, myself, my insides, my spirit um, to something higher, to God, to nature, to something where I'm not feeling as distracted. Now, I like both. You know, I like doing the, the music, the podcast. I love that stuff, meditation sessions. But I think there's a certain time and a place for it. And I don't necessarily have like a mapped out schedule that I use. I just kind of go with how I'm feeling in the moment. Like I'm like, you know, earlier I took a walk down, uh, down to the store to grab something to drink, take a little break, get a little sun. And uh, I just wanted it quiet just, just walked, just quiet, was just nice, nice and relaxing. So, um, you can do those meditation sessions guided. Uh, you can do them quiet. You can do anything, you know, how, how, whatever you feel like is working for you at that time is, is how I do it. At least, um, another thing that I got to do this week was yoga on the beach with the Jess. Now that was legit. Obviously, if you're not near a beach, that's going to be a little tough, but there's yoga everywhere. So maybe it's a park yoga. Maybe it's a yoga studio. I'm definitely not the pro at yoga. You know who is the pro at yoga? And a lot of people might not. Well, no, actually, you do know this because the podcast, because we talked about it, is my good buddy, Seth Manter. Um, Let's see. What episode was that? That was episode 355, the best sober podcast with Seth Manter. Go back and listen to that. And uh, we talked about some some yoga and the practice, and um, you know Seth's really inspired me, and I know his mom uh, inspired him to uh, to to dive into yoga and make that spiritual connection. I'm just super tight in myself; like I haven't done a lot of it, so um, I'm definitely more flexible, I guess, than I have been in in you know prior years. Just making sure that I stay fit and work out and run and that kind of stuff. Um, but yoga on the beach, man a great way to relax. And I don't, it wasn't perfect. I probably look goofy at some of the poses and stuff because I'm not great at it. I don't care. I'm just out there trying to connect spiritually, trying to stay relaxed, trying to stay present. That's really what it's about. So maybe that's an option for you. Maybe you've wanted to try it before someone's invited you and you, oh, I don't know. I feel stupid. Like who gives a shit? Just try it. Just do it. I mean, we only live once. We got to try things. We got to step out. Let me tell you this. I've gotten really uncomfortable in the last couple of months on some things, and I have felt the most growth that I have in a long time by being uncomfortable. And that's not just talk. That's actually feeling it and going through it. So I can promise you, I know it sucks sometimes to get uncomfortable, whatever it is you're going through, but do it. Try it. Go for it. Um, Maybe it's yoga. Maybe it's the next one, workouts and running. Maybe it's workouts or running. I've been taking some good yogs. I believe it's its new thing. It's called yogging. 
something. I don't know. We just run. We just run for fun. <laughs> but lots of jogging, lots of lots of running going on. You know, just say hey, go out and get some sun in the mornings. It's a good time. Get a little jogging. And if you can't run, maybe you got bad knees or you you hate running. Do a walk. Do a nice walk, man. Walk the dog a little bit. Take the dog on a 30-minute walk. Get the blood pumping. Get moving. Get exercising. Exercise. It's a funny word. Exercise. Workouts, too, man. My boy Trent. You know you know Trent, Coach Trent. Uh, man, I'm, I'm repping a lot, of, uh, a lot of podcasts today going back, but that was... What episode was Trent? Uh, let's see. Where is it, dude? No. Well, I don't know. I can't find it now. But sponsorships. I just had Trent on. I can't even find it on here. That's a bummer, dude. Well, for those of you who listen, we just had actually somebody, uh, was it Gabby? I think it was Gabby. Shout out to Gabby. She hit me up on Instagram as well, just with a thank you about um, the podcast and the work that I'm doing. And I've had a few people actually this week. So if you if that was you, thank you very much, Gabby. And a couple, I think Joe was another one who, who hit us up and uh, with a thank you. So we appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just, I'm wondering where the episode with Trent is, but in any case, um, look for it. Trent programs me. Uh, does that make sense? Trent programs me. Trent programs workouts for me. How about that? And I uh, finally got a new workout as I kind of getting dialed in here. And that was awesome. Got a little kettlebell action, uh, a little running, some, some interval 400 meter runs, some burpees, all that good stuff, man. Like it's, it all comes to get, and maybe this sounds like a lot. Maybe you're going, holy shit, this is a lot of stuff. I'm even thinking that as I'm announcing it and talking about it, am I announcing it? Are you, do you announce shit? I'm not announcing it. I'm talking about it. I'm going down a list here, but you feel what I'm saying? Like, it's like, holy shit, that's a lot. It does maybe sound like a lot, but it's really not. I'm breaking it up. I'm doing it in the time that I have allotted, you know, in my schedule during the day. But I guess point being is I'm making progress. I'm putting in my best effort. And in order to stay mentally fit, physically fit, spiritually fit, we got to put the, the the work in and the effort in. And it's not always easy. I'm a slacker sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm like fucking all on board and just balls to the wall. And sometimes I can slack a little bit, you know, and you got to find a balance in between and then not beat yourself up over it. If it's not perfect. That's one thing I've been learning grace, get, you know, trying to give myself a little bit of grace and you got to do the same. So get active workouts, running, whatever, whatever it is, hit up Trent. If I can go back and find the dang episode, you know, his info's in there. You can program stuff for you, all that stuff, you know, or just go on a walk or a run, get the, bu- get the blood pumping. Uh, podcast is another one. Listen in to different podcasts. I'm actually on some different, uh, against the stream. I've been listening to some of that lately. I think I mentioned that last podcast. Seth had sent a, a couple over the five hindrances. I've been on that with Vinny. Uh, is it Vinny Fer- Ferreira? I think it, how do you say his last name? I, I may have messed that up, but, um, the five hindrances. And then there was another one on karma that was good. Um, you know, we, what else I have, uh, man, this is funny. So, I used to listen to a podcast back when I first started listening to podcasts before I started sober guy. And it was actually a big inspiration uh, to start sober guy. There was two of them. There was the new man with my buddy trip Lanier, who's been on the show a couple times. Um, that's a great podcast. And the other one is entrepreneur on fire with John Lee Dumas. I don't know if anybody has listened to that, but I've been back on that a little, little bit lately in my entrepreneurial spirit has been arising And uh, it's one of the things I love about being sober is I don't just dream about shit anymore. I can take action because I mean, I wait, how do I put that? I still dream about shit, but I actually take action on the things that I would like to do or pursue or create plans uh, in the process. So am I perfect at it? Hell no. But it's definitely, do you remember that when you just sit back, just getting drunk and I'm going to fucking do this and do that. And this is fucking guy. Why do I always talk like that? I don't know, but there's that voice, right? Those dreams that never seem to pan out because we just talks about it in the big book a bit, you know, but when you're sober, it's different. 
something different about that. So podcasts though, what's your favorite podcast? Maybe it's sober guy. Awesome. I'm going to guess that you have quite a few more that you also listen to. That's something that can help keep you dialed in, um, keep you sober, uh, keep you spiritually, mentally fit as well. Um, the other ones, a cu- couple more here, communicating, just communicate, talk to your sponsor, talk to a friend, talk to your spouse. If you need to, I would highly recommend having somebody outside of the relationship that you're in that you can talk to, you know, a friend, a sponsor, uh, a mentor, somebody that's huge. Be able to communicate someone you trust, talk about what's going on. Um, and then Joe said this as well, and I'm going to second it meeting with my sponsor met with him today. Every, every, uh, at once a week on Thursdays we meet and, uh, that's a, you know, that's an important part of, um, of staying in this spiritually fit state, I guess, which is really fucking hard some days. Um, it's really hard to be aware all the time. It's really hard to be present all the time. But as, as long as I feel like I'm improving and, and getting better and staying conscious of it, I get a little bit better each day. And sometimes you feel set setbacks, of course, but I'm trying to move forward. Um, oh, that was the other thing I was going to say about the, um, about the, uh, the yoga session. So the, the yoga instructor, um, I forgot her name, but, uh, super cool. She, when we started to kind of start the session, one of the things she said, and I think it was a Martin Luther King Jr. quote, I think is, um, is what she quoted, but, uh, she said, if you can't fly run, and if you can't run walk, and if you can't walk crawl, but whatever you do, keep moving forward. But I thought that was great in, in focusing on moving forward. And just cause you're not doing it perfect, or maybe you got to adjust, um, you got to keep moving forward. And it, it did, it did stop and make me think about that. So it's a great quote too. Uh, and, and very, very true. Um, so a couple more, and then we're going to wrap up today. Going to be a little bit of a shorter, shorter podcast today, but I hope something spoke to you and something helped. Um, the, the last one I wanted to talk about here was serving others and focusing on that, focusing on serving my kids, serving my wife, which can be difficult sometimes when we get caught up in our head. Like we're so focused, laser focused sometimes on the shit going on inside of our own heads. It's hard to step out of that and serve somebody else. But when we can do that, it does help like huge. It helps, um, like so, so much. And I don't even understand it sometimes, you know, that's one of the things I've always heard and, uh, and is, you know, Hey, if you're struggling, go help somebody else. And it's such a good, such a good tool to use. So wherever you go, there you are. And I just want to, um, end with that today that this, this comes from within, this comes from putting the work in, uh, it comes from not being perfect, but being persistent, uh, having patience and just really showing up and trying your best and making sure that, um, you know, that you got good community and support around you at the same time. And then the surrender aspect and giving up control. I don't have time to dive into a lot of that today, but there's definitely an element to that, uh, a, a huge element in, in being able to just be okay with how it is right in this moment, just as it is. Uh, and maybe that's a good, a good topic. Uh, you know, I'll take a note of that and, and maybe touch on that in a future podcast coming up acceptance and, uh, and being in, in the moment a little bit more in that surrender, um, that time really trusting in God and, and, and practicing that because uh, it's not an easy thing either, but, uh, thank you for tuning in today. I hope you heard something that helps you or that helps your, uh, your recovery. Um, appreciate you guys go to that sober Uh, If you want more information, resources, all kinds of good stuff on there. Join us on Locals. Follow us on Instagram at That Sober Guy Podcast. Peace, love, and respect, and keep your blood clean.